Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to Inside the Titanic Sub Disaster, and I've been so interested in this story. I've been looking into it when not doing reactions as well. There was a video yesterday that was like 26 minutes from this guy who vlogged the whole experience on the ship, and it was like testing the sub, and he could have been the one who made that next voyage to the Titanic, but the seas or the, the conditions weren't good enough. Luckily for him, but um, yeah, you just sort of saw the ins and outs, and it it showed the 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 main guy who like is the head, was the head of the company and stuff, and it's just crazy to see that just a few days later, this is what happened, and it could have been anyone. Like, that's the thing; it could have been anyone, and it's just wild to think. But and also, it makes you realize the dangers of just trying to even get under the surface because the seas can be so rough and all this sort of stuff. But um, yeah, we're gonna check this out and see. This may actually be the last one. I know I've said that many times, but you know what? I'm not actually sure because I just keep finding more videos that get me more and more interested. But yeah, we're going to check this out. Hopefully you're going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon and all that. But I guess we're going to learn more about what what went on. And it's from the same channel that I reacted to before. So they seem pretty informed on like what, what went on, etc. But yeah, let's check this out. Catastrophic implosion. The unthinkable became all too real this past week as we learned of the fate of undersea explorer Stockton Rush's Titan submersible on its way to the Atlantic grave of the Titanic. The questions, the second guessing, David Pogue tells us, are likely to continue for a long time to come. Last summer, a company called OceanGate invited Sunday morning to join an expedition to the Titanic. At the time, I was thrilled. Next time I come out of this doorway, I'll either be a changed man forever or cursing the bad weather. As the whole world knows now, OceanGate's business was taking adventure seekers on these Titanic dives. Well, we're sitting on the Titanic. We yeah. are on the Titanic. <laughs> for $250,000 a ticket. On a Wait, so this person managed to see the Titanic. Fuck. One of a kind carbon fiber submersible called the Titan. Carbon fiber is a great material. It's better than titanium. It's better than a lot of other materials. This is Stockton Rush, the CEO of OceanGate and the designer of the sub. Last Sunday, as he was piloting the sub to the Titanic, it imploded, killing him and his four passengers. We spent nine days at sea with Rush last summer, and in wake of the tragic news, we thought you might like to see more of what we saw and hear more of what Stockton Rush said. Okay. The Titan wasn't like any previous deep sea submersible. There was no dashboard, just a touchscreen computer and a single power button. We only have one button, that's it. <laughs> Wait a minute, I've, I've seen submersibles and they are banks of controls, yeah. like, like cockpit after cockpit. Exactly. And this is to other submersibles what the iPhone was to the Blackbird. But many of its components seemed surprisingly cheap. For views outside the sub, he had installed store-bought security cameras. As for the ceiling light... Store-bought... What? <laughs> Flipping hell. Lights. I got these from uh, Camper World. <clears throat> and then there was the steering unit. Um, we run the whole Controller. thing with this game controller. <laughs> Come on! So, it seems like a lot of the way you made this is by taking off-the-shelf parts and sort of MacGyvering them together. Yeah. <laughs> he's just admitted it. Oh my days. So he just got bits here from there, you know. Obviously, I guess the important components were the pricey things, where it'd be the best quality, right? But again, I don't know, but that's pretty crazy. He's just admitted that. Pretty much. Does that not raise anybody's eyebrows in the industry? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm definitely an outlier. There were a lot of rules out there that didn't make engineering sense to me. Everyone I know keeps asking me the same question. Why would you get on that dangerous sub? Well, first of all, Stockton Rush had the credentials. He majored in aerospace engineering at Princeton. He designed and flew his own airplanes. He designed previous submersibles. Second, he was emphatic that the important parts of the Titan were rock solid, like the carbon fiber body for which NASA served as a consultant. 
I mean, you look on the outside, it does look chunky as hell. It looks like it has the ability to protect people. So it is crazy to think that even this got, this got, like this imploded because it looks so like, it just looks like it'd be strong as hell, which obviously it is, but it just shows how the power at those depths is just to a level you can't even understand. There's certain things that you want to be uh, buttoned down and that's the pressure vessel. Once the pressure vessel is, you're certain it's not gonna collapse on everybody, everything else can fail. Your thrusters can go, your lights can go, you're still gonna be safe. Third, I was convinced by uh, an expert, P.H. Narjolet, the veteran deep sea explorer who also perished in the Titan. Over the years, he'd been to the Titanic more than just about anyone. How many times have you been? Uh, with the last uh, dive, uh, 37 times. You've been to the Titanic? Surely you get bored at a certain point. Surely there's a limit where you're just like, you know what, this is just the same. <laughs> and I'm risking my life for what? Titanic 37 times? Yes. I was in charge of uh, one, two, three, four, five, five sub. How different is the Titan from those other subs? Completely different. Most of them, you have a sphere. Was there never a point when you wondered about the, the safety of the sub at that depth? No. Two or three years ago, I had a phone call with uh, Stockton, and he explained to me that he was doing a, a lot of tests. He showed me some the, the ways they were building the stuff. I said, OK, that's fine. That's fine. I have no problem to dive in the sub. I was also impressed by the sub's seven redundant systems for returning to the surface. These are roll weights. We can actually roll this up and those come off. That gains us some buoyancy to come back to the surface. Okay. These triple weights, we call them, are, uh, are hydraulically driven. Expedition manager Kyle Bingham. Underneath this tray hang these bags. We're around, around 35 pounds. And those hang down there. Typical dive will have eight of them. Uh, we can also use our thrusters. We have enough power to thrust back up. And then under this last fairing here, we have our variable ballast tank or soft ballast. It's an air bladder that we use a big 10,000 PSI air tank that's under the tail to fill that up, fill it with air, and then it helps bring us to the surface. There were even sandbags that detach automatically after about 16 hours, even if everyone inside had passed out. Their connectors would dissolve in seawater. So you have a backup of a backup of a backup of a backup of a backup. Correct. All stations are reporting the dive to go. Please stand by. Finally, the crew seemed to foster a culture of safety. There were checklists, inspections before and after every dive, and a three strikes rule. If three things seemed out of the ordinary, no matter how minor, they'd cancel the dive. I learned that the hard way on our own dive. We're in the water, we're floating. Woo! At this point, divers are supposed to detach the sub from its launch platform. So apparently those floats there came off the platform and that wasn't supposed to happen. So we're scrubbing? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the consensus up here. Copy that. I never did see the Titanic, and I wasn't unusual. In OceanGate's first two summers of Titanic operations, it spent a total of 50 days floating above the shipwreck site. But because of waves, bad wow. weather, and malfunction. So it shows how they really would have to go at the perfect time or they're just not doing it so that obviously shows there was safety measures in place and it shows how risky it is but even then it just shows how even with all that stuff it wasn't enough you know functions the titan actually made it to the titanic only 12 times but wow. through it all stockton rush defended his unconventional approach i mean anything when you're trying something outside the box People inside the box think you're nuts. <laughs> Same thing when uh, Elon Musk was doing SpaceX. Inside the box, everything's scary. But he sounds so, so much like Ben Shapiro. I don't know where he's from, but he just, he's got the same voice as him. As early as 2018, there was concern about the Titan's design. A former employee says that when he raised safety concerns, Rush fired him. That same year, a group of submersible engineers urged Rush to seek certification of the Titan by a safety agency. Rush declined, saying that regulation would stifle innovation. At Jesus, some point, man. safety just is pure waste. I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed, don't get in your car, don't do anything. The fact that he said all this stuff and people would willingly get on it is pretty wild because surely they've done their research and looked into the details. Because if I heard this 
and then I went on that stuff. I, there's no chance I'm, I'm traveling. There's no way. I'm sorry. I'm hearing. I know it's easy to say it in hindsight, right? But if I'm hearing this stuff and I'm hearing the owner, the person who is the figurehead of the company saying this stuff, pretty much not disregarding safety, but just sort of saying it's not the most important thing. I'm like, God damn, I'm not coming here. I mean, I probably wouldn't do it anyway, no matter what. But this just adds to it. Like, jeez, man. And then with hindsight, it sounds even crazier. Yeah. At some point, you're going to take some risk. And it really is a risk reward question. I said, I think I can do this just as safely by breaking the rules. So, Captain McLaren, um, have you spent much time in submarines? David, my total time under the water, divorced from the outside atmosphere, is a little over five and three quarters years. No wow. kidding. Fact. Retired U.S. Navy submarine captain Alfred McLaren is not impressed by Ocean Gate's innovations. I mean, would you fly in an airplane that somebody excitedly tell you, well, it's going to be a lot cheaper because we found a new way of attaching the wings? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he theorizes point. that the Titan failed not because it was made of carbon fiber, but because it was made of three dissimilar materials, carbon fiber, titanium, and plexiglass for the porthole. When you have different materials, different molecular structure, they have different coefficients of expansion and compression, and you then you make repeated cycles in depth, of course you're gonna work that seal loose. And that's why submarines don't run around with, a, with any portholes at all, come to think of it. It's a weak point. I think there's a, a great, almost surreal um, irony here, which is Titanic sank because the captain took it full steam into a, an ice field at night on a moonless night with very poor visibility uh, after he had been repeatedly warned by telegram by Marconi Graham. In an interview with Anderson Cooper, filmmaker and veteran Titanic diver James Cameron pointed out a sad parallel between Stockton Rush and the captain of the Titanic. The arrogance and the hubris that sent that ship to its doom is exactly the same thing that sent those people in that, that sub to their fate. The world mourns the loss of Stockton Rush, P.H. Narjolet, and their three passengers, British billionaire Hamish Harding, Pakistani businessman Jazada Daywood, and his son Suleiman. Already there's talk of restrictions and regulations and lawsuits. Will the Ocean Gate disaster mean fewer people going adventuring? Well, every year people do die skydiving and scuba diving and climbing Mount Everest. Tragic every time. And yet, people still keep coming. Some people just have that itch. For them, danger is the point. The risk of dying gives meaning to living. Yeah, I understand that, but then they don't actually want to die. It just gives them the thrill. I'm assuming when it actually comes to dying, they don't want to. I mean, obviously, that's a dumb thing to say, but like, the idea I understand, but then, like, if it's actually coming to death or not, then obviously they're not going to do it. But I guess you, you go into these things thinking nothing's going to happen, right? Because you've got that sort of mindset. But I guess that's why I'm kind of happy that I do have that mindset in a certain degree. Maybe not with everything, but with something like this, I would be instantly thinking the worst case scenario. That's, then again, that's how I am with like flying. I'm always thinking worst case scenario. And I'm not really that bad at flying anymore. I've got used to it and I'm flying again soon. Like it's not a fear of mine, but I just always have it in the back of my mind. Like, oh, it's going to go wrong. But that's probably just how some people are but works in some aspects and it doesn't work in some aspects in this sort of in this sort of scenario i think it would work but at the same time i've not got 250 grand just to cough up for a voyage to the titanic so i haven't got to worry about this anyway i think stockton rush was among them i wanted to be sort of the captain kirk um i didn't want to be the passenger in the back <laughs> and i realized that the ocean is is the universe that's where life is Crazy man. As an engineer, there's two things you don't cheat: costs and physics. He did both. Him willing to go out during doing what he loved isn't the problem. It was his willingness to take other people down with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. If he had his whole cost, um, like cheat, what was it? Not cheat code. Cutting costs. Just basically doing it the best way possible for him, money wise and also safety wise. And it was just him. Or maybe his crew that didn't care either. Then fair enough. You know what? You do what you want to do. But if you've got 
other people coming, you, that should be your number one priority. I'm like, again, it's easy to say now, but I feel like in any industry, that's the case. Safety is always the first, the, mo the most important thing, to be honest. It's kind of frustrating to hear him sort of brush it aside when you now know what's happened, but yeah. Crazy story, man. It just, it's so fascinating. Just the more I see this, the more I'm like, God damn, how did this manage to happen? Surely someone could have stepped in line and be like, yeah, you can't do this. Because you had other companies saying, like, they should have had safety checks and stuff. But if this was to do with planes or another industry, I'm almost 100% certain that they wouldn't be allowed to function without proper things in place to check out what's actually going on. But yeah, I guess I've seen before how, like, in the ocean, it's a lot different. Like, you can get away with many different things because it's international waters and there's no real laws in place. But, yeah, man, it's wild. But, yeah. If you want to see more of this stuff let me know but let me know your thoughts as well and if you're someone involved in this kind of job i guess let me know your thoughts if you're a mechanic let me know what your opinions on this guy is guy are and also just how he managed to have let this happen because it is just a whole mess but yeah that's that until next time peace